When I started Psychofan, I thought at first it was going to be a impactful, first beginning. Everything would be highly rushed, excitable. Everything would just be going at a fast pace. And then when I started this series, I started it as a slice of life comedy. And down the line, I thought to myself, when does the action start? When does the thriller start? Am I deceiving myself? Salutations and welcome to the Avis channel. If you're new here, hello, welcome. My name is Avis C. You could call me that either either or any rhyme or reason. And if you're coming back, welcome back always for showing me support of my, not only my videos, but my comics, my commissions, my art, my writing in general. And so I welcome you guys back and showing me support. And I always appreciate you all for doing that for me. And today's topic we are talking about in this video, something that I had to reflect on dear and near to my heart it hit me like a, a truck filled with bricks and now we're talking about something that I think I will apply more to my up and coming series Monarch and I thought this would be a good topic to talk about because firstly I think I was a little bit blind when doing some of these videos talking to you all about how to have a quote successful webtoon or how to start right or how to get it right outlines and yada 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 but i forget always to kind of address a big affects your overall direction of your comic that people may look over and lo and behold guess who had some self-intervention i had to go ahead and strive through my own self and kind of sort through pick through my own problems and point the finger back to myself and say hey you're not upholding to the standards here what's going on so as you can see, this video is going to be probably a lengthy one and it's probably going to be a little insightful one for you all, perhaps, because we're going to do a lot of, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of self-evaluation here. So if you are into this and you are ready to hear what I got to say about this topic today, go ahead and do yourself a favor and find something to do. If you have nothing to do, that's a cue. You need something to do. Cook something, clean something, vacuum, dust, wash the dishes, do the laundry, do your hair, do your nails, knit, write, pay bills, make some ornaments, color coordinate your closet, write in your agenda, uh build a cabinet go ahead and tag it to me down in my twitter or instagram down below in the description box to let me know what you've done guys while you're listening to this video or any of other my videos that i have on this channel and go ahead and tell me that you were productive while listening to this and i think without further ado i'm gonna go ahead and nab a pen pencil cooking utensil or a margarita if you're of age yeah and let's dive but before we do that before we dive i want to request you guys to please make sure that you are subscribed making sure that you're liking the videos making sure you're interacting with the videos commenting whatever you have on your mind i'm open to it i want to hear your thoughts because not only does it help the algorithm but it helps me because youtube doesn't seem to like my content or what I talk about or long videos in general so if you could do that I would be most thankful and appreciative if you could and make sure that you tell YouTube that we are here we are here and that this is a working channel and it is operative it is live it is active and that would mean a lot to me so I appreciate you all for that now let's dive into the video so as you could tell from the start of the video i kind of did a jab to myself i went ahead and took the spear and turned it on myself and said wow where do i even begin when discussing this topic with you all as some of you may or may not know i am an author on webtoon canvas of a series called psychophant and it is about a mink named Renan who has social troubles and little issues and a having a troubled past so he has a trauma that he has endured that has led him up to a point where he is on a venture a new venture to seek out his dreams and working at a company called Ruby Cyclone and he has a ring that kind of indicates something in his past is significant to him and he kind of needs to figure out what is the ring where did it come from who did it come from what was his past what are his memories kind of you know missing what was the trauma that scarred him and along the way he meets some friends some adventures are supposed to happen 
and the memories are supposed to come out and it was supposed to be this kind of psycho thriller because there's someone who is wildly obsessed with him this is a big thing in itself as it sounds and auspicious ambition is not a good term to designate what i was feeling when i started the series i wanted to in this sort of way kind of not only draw something that i was kind of into you know thrillers and mysteries and just something that was kind of upscale and kind of you know like a horror flick kind of but the tone it started to change at the start of the series like i said in beginning it, although it doesn't have a comedy slice of life genre tag when you get into it when you read it for the first time people have read it you know what i'm talking about it does not start out so much as a thriller it starts out more as a slice of life slow burn everything's kind of going along and the lore is there the lore is being dispersed there probably it was clanky when i started it i'll admit and it's just not as what I wanted it to be. So we're just talking about why tone is so important when you're starting your webtoon or series or anything that has to do with conveying a medium to the audience because you really need to have that tone in tune and intact when you're trying to get a story point message out there because if you don't have it intact it's not gonna come out as probably you have sought it to be that you foresaw it to be and that was my problem that is my problem with psychophant at this point if you were to sit down and ask me and say viv is psychophant something that you're most proud of as your first webtoon series and i would probably look at you and say hmm you you are very insightful it probably is not and why i'm probably not the most proud of it is because the tone is wonky the tone is wrong and I regret that so much. But if I was to say I'm proud of it because of how far it's gotten and maybe how dedicated I was, I would say, oh, hell yes. I'm very proud of myself because I've not been as dedicated to something that has been so, just something in general. I haven't been dedicated to a lot of things. My attention span is that to a gnat. You can measure the diameter of my attention span of a gnat. And so you could tell it is very vast, right? <laughs> but anywho, going back down to earth with you all being honest no psychophant does not meet this criteria of what i'm talking about today because actually i learned a lot a lick it or two from this series that flops so bad and it just helped me realize and kind of categorize okay this is what you should not do so if you are trying or kind of struggling with this the whole pacing and it's supposed to be this way but actually not it turned around and did this how about we could kind of sit down together and uh, discuss what tone is. Let's go ahead and start out and define what tone is. And maybe later down the line I could discuss the plans of Psychophant. But right now, just know guys, it's not going on a... I'm not chopping it off. Um, I'm, I'm not chopping it. I'm just using it for a... Let's just say that Psychophant will probably not be successful. And I'm okay with it not being as successful because... Heck, it was my first one, and I'm just using it at this point, just for me. It really is for me. If people want to read along, along the way, sure, come on, hop on, guys. But just, just to put a disclaimer out there, if you're interested in reading it, just know I'm not holding it up to a high standard anymore like I used to. It probably won't be on a high pedestal standard. I'm just using it to kind of convey my um, storytelling element. It's kind of experimental, and it just, all in all, it's just a, it is just a big nomenclature of experimentation, so don't expect much out of it. But going on to the video ahead in defining tone. What is tone in the terms of writing? As you can see here on the screen, I probably have it up, literarydevices.net, and it says, definition of tone. Tone is a literary device that reflects the writer's attitude towards the subject matter or audience of a literal work. By conveying this attitude through tone, the writer creates a particular relationship with the reader that, in turn, influences the intention and meaning of the written words. However, though the writer's tone may reflect their personal attitude or opinion, this literary device may also strictly apply to conveying the attitudes and feelings of a certain character or narrator. Therefore, it's essential for readers to look closely at the literary choices made by the writer 
character so as not to unfairly assign the tone to them and interpret tone judiciously. That is a definition of tone when talking about literary devices, again, with writing. But what does this have to do with webtoon not to digress too much from the topic but i want to make it clear to you all that i am no shape or form a professional i have no phd actually in writing or storytelling so if you're not really wanting to hear from a hoo-ha hoo person who am i right you don't want to hear it from me or um you just you don't you don't want to take advice from me because i don't have a degree or a delegated degrees or certificate that states that I am capable of teaching these things to you. I understand and I wish you well. Go find somebody who has a PhD and listen to them and hear it from them because I am again in no shape or form a professional. I just like this topic. I just like this passion and if you like this passion like me maybe we can sit down together and talk it through you know like we are now and we'll just have a good time. So just to put that out there I am not a professional. This is all coming from experience and I just want to go ahead and share that with you guys. Now when we are talking about tone and literary devices like we discussed one thing is firstly important when you're trying to make a tone out for the beginning of your series. Make sure that you understand the impact the beginning of your series has to have an impact usually that's what they say you know you hear the thing like have a hook at the beginning starting of your series make sure that you have something that will keep a reader in and will ensure them to stay because heck why are they reading it why are they reading something that has no hook or no impact at the beginning of the series? One conveyance that trends recently is relatability. Having relatability sometimes in works media is sometimes a good move because you want to keep people around and say, hey, I know what that feels like. I want to see what happens to them or wow, I just went through that. I want to see how they handle it. You know, things like that that keep people around and keep people focused and people wanted to see more. Now, that's one way to hook a reader in is with relatability. But if you're not into relatability, you're not going for that, you know, because heck, this story is about superheroes and masterminds. Okay, Death Note. Have you guys seen Death Note? I know somebody out there has seen Death Note. If you have, just holler at me as my favorite series, one of my favorite people say they get into naruto bleach whatever have you that was not my first series not one of them it was death note so i'm a bit of a nerd i'm a bit of a relic for for philosophy and that's where i got it <laughs> my beginnings actually stem from death note and the way that zgumi obata has depicted the life of morality versus justice and you know justice of reality i i'm into that you can catch me all day with it. I am into those sort of stories, but not to digress again too much. The variant won't be strong in this. I just wanted to say that when it comes to tones in that fictional world and in that story, if you've read it and if you watched it, you understand what I'm getting at. It's, it's interesting because it's not only serious, not only kind of a thriller, not only is it kind of borderlining on grim and mysterious, but it also has high notes of hope and determination embedded with it. Because if you think about Light, right, when you think about him, not only is he, of course, this psychopathic killer, but he is also showing forth a determination of morality that we can all agree with, that bad people don't deserve to hurt others. You know, you want to go ahead and put yourself in the shoes of light, maybe sometimes even root for him because he's trying to obscure justice in a way that paints it in a new light. He's trying to rectify the justice system of bad people always getting away with things or bad people having their ways if they're rich and they're famous or or they have no somebody and they can get away with these sort of things and the justice crime system's lenient on them whereas good people suffer for it you know it's unfair unruly it, it just talks about those things and it kind of shows forth a very odd indirect or reverse rather role on the protagonist whereas you would think he'd be the villain or he you would think he would be the hero he like is the villain or villain you know that kind of role and that the tone there is 
it's very great that the way that the mangaka has set it up especially the way that it starts if you haven't read if you haven't watched it probably already spoiled it for you but go ahead and go give it a watch go ahead and read i recommend it 10 out of 10 but it doesn't do so much of a drastic tonal shift in death note but it kind of starts at the beginning of the series so tonal shifts sometimes are a good thing if you know how to master that spectrum but if you're not a master so much you just want to make sure that it has holds a consistency because again as the example shows tone is important when you want to make an impact on people and to leave them thinking about it and wanting more in the themes of the story you want to make sure the themes are in line because it gets people talking about your series and it gets people it hooked to your series so that's another reason why you want to make sure you know what the starting tone is and if you change it throughout, make sure that you do it in a way that's subtle. So to summarize basically what tone is intended for, imagine with the example earlier, if those who have watched Death Note, if it started out as the tone that it started out with, you know, grim, dire, bleak, and kind of dark, and then slowly, the hints after the beginning, it became a comedy slice of life. Yeah that's not quite as enjoyable as what we got now. So as you could tell that just it's unimaginable what would be of Death Note if the tone just drastically changed. Not so much dropped in quality but just changed direction of what the tone was. It wouldn't have made much of an impact if it didn't keep that strong you know forthright tone that it had going at the beginning if it changed all of a sudden. And for those who don't know about Death Note or anything, just imagine a bleak entire story that changes like haphazardly from the beginning in the middle to a comedy slice of life. It just doesn't work, right? You want to put the parts together that fits. So that was just to summarize kind of a roundabout way of describing what tone is and how it does in a story. Now let's kind of move on to understanding how what means to keeping a tone. So in other words, if the tone of the story is a fast paced one, if it's supposed to be fast paced, everything's kind of happening left and right from the start, from the get go, you want to keep it that way. Make sure that whatever the tone is at the beginning, you keep it that way. Am I saying that you can't slow down every now and again? No, I'm not. I'm saying within that slowness though, there is a form of urgency still that comes with the flow of time. So think of it like this. You have a scene where, you know, at the beginning, everything was kind of like left, right, left, right, things happening, action everywhere, you know, because it's an action packed story. But then things slow down, you know, your, your heroes are either relaxing, you know, they're getting to know one another. Maybe not make it to where it's like everyone can expect, okay, the characters are about to sit down and we're about to not get it to any plot. It's about to be just a goof off or something. And if people are into that, again, go at it, do it. But if you want to keep the realism of how you set up the storyline to sort of follow, how about instead of them like sitting back and relaxing all of a sudden, how about like they're on the move, going someplace, like a journey, and they're getting to know one another. You know, the plot's still progressing. Things are still going. It's still kind of fast. But like, it's um, a controlled variable. There it is. You're controlling the space yet you're allowing the plot to thrust forward. The same thing that applies for a opposite effect. If you have a slow story, a slow pace, a slow tone going on, you know, it's supposed to be like a slice of life kind of thing and things are supposed to be kind of slow anyway. And, but you want to all of a sudden make the characters get to know one another because they're on this road trip and you want things to kind of go fast and fun. Could happen, got to do it right. But if you want to make it more natural, progress it in a way that maybe perhaps they are around the campfire scene or something once they get to the place of destination and they're kind of taking it slow still but still getting to know one another but it's still in the remedy of a plot so these are kind of um again just ideas maybe that you guys can kind of evaluate in the palm of your hands and say wow that was that that's a good example or wow that's not good i was just trying to kind of trying to visualize for you guys of what tone kind of is in a manifested way so it isn't as 
you know, hard to imagine or hard to put together. You just think in natural ways that you approach a situation and how things kind of flow in the real world, you know, just kind of go with that. But at the same time, don't. It, it, it really is a uh, funny thing because you got to have a balance for it. But moving on, I think uh, from this sketchy ramble, I, I think I just want to say that um, me, myself, the reason why I think I have the most trouble with tone is because I'm more of a writer. Yeah, I'm more of a writer. And so what happened was, what happened was, I like details. I like loads of details. I don't like to <laughs> like exclude anything. I want to put everything in the scene, set it up for everyone, but in that I slow down the plot, even though it's supposed to be a fast-paced plot, right? I slow it down because I include every single detail that's not supposed to be important. I, it was really, really hard and it was really um, cumbersome in the beginning of Psycho Fan, especially because it was the beginning stage, you know, Renan was on the island of A-Rock and he was just kind of like looking around looking around yeah things were kind of happening left and right kind of like how i wanted it but it was still inconsistent with the drive of the rest of the story <laughs> because in one chapter he meets up with this guy named renoa right um he's um some sort of zolotol and he has a wallet and something happens a, a mismatch mix up that that my friends was supposed to happen in one chapter that whole thing, that whole scene of them taking the wallet, getting the wallet, and leaving the wallet to their destination, transferring it, and that was supposed to happen in one chapter. That happened in like, I don't know, three chapters. I just extended it so much to a way that was just not necessary, and yeah, that's just a little, just a little obvious tick off for me that I just, again, I just look back and I'm like, man, what was I thinking? I don't know. I think I just, again, like I said, I'm more of a writer, but I'm not a teller. How can I be a writer but not a teller? Okay, but I can't convey the words or <laughs> I can't convey messages, right, to everyone to see, read, and understand. I have a problem with that. So I I think I need to work on that a little bit, admit to myself that I do have a problem with that, and try to fix it because it can and it has and it will hurt me as I'll discuss a little later, but I just want to encourage everyone listening to the video right now and listening, if you listen this far, I'm going to go ahead and try to drop my puppet voice because my voice is escalating for no reason. Uh, if you don't know what a puppet voice is, it's when I talk like this, my voice gets a little dry and I have to take a sip get a sip of water guys but the voice off I want to encourage you guys that it's okay it's okay to admit to mistakes it's okay to come down from the high horse like me I, I had to come down it's okay to self-evaluate and say okay all this bullshit that I was pretending like like a, a a peacock train, you know, like a tail, like it's everything, it's got style, it's got pizzazz. It's actually just, it's actually on fire. <laughs> There's nothing there. Don't look. But just know it's okay to make mistakes, to not feel fulfilled by the very thing you're supposed to be fulfilled by, to the very thing that you keep promoting but you're kind of slightly ashamed of. It's okay to find those mistakes and just learn from them because how else are you going to learn? How else are you going to grow if you don't take the time to just appreciate what you have now? It's okay to just be that person to say, okay, I've written this comic for about a year or two now and it's just not good. It's okay to admit that. And I know some people are going to be ticked off, pissed off, that you would even have a doubt in your mind about something that you've built up on for so long and so many people probably put their time and effort into it too and gradually the process the whole thing kind of sucks because you feel guilty for taking people's time but at the same time at the same time if they are understanding and caring people if they are people who have made the six to down in their life i think they would be a little bit more than understanding and usually they are so don't put yourself on, don't put yourself in the pillory just yet. Just know that you have second chances and you could come back from them. So just know it's okay to look back at your series, look and see if the tone in the beginning of your story is congruent to the tone of your story now. A-okay. Now where is all of this 
coming round about to where, where was this all stemmed from of course i always have a backstory to all of my videos so i want to say that i actually watched one youtuber and her name is rochella sriki uh she goes by boba east now i think and i think if it's changed i i don't know but it, she used to be known as rochella sriki and one of her videos, I'll have it up in the entry card perhaps, she discussed having a satisfying story. And I'm not so much trying to, again with Psychophant particularly, I'm not trying to promote it as this big shindig like everyone look at here, it's everything you've ever wanted, it has all the bells and thistles, it's going to be great, awesome. Now at this point again, like I say everybody, Psychophant is, Psychophant is experimentation. It, I just want to appreciate it for what it is. But what she explained in her video is about having a satisfying story progression and i don't know what it was that hit me but i watched through her video and i succumbed to the idea that stories have a payoff in the end that's right due to her video kind of kind of clicking in me and saying well viv i i think you have to take the l on this one Please be reminded that you, your story needs to have a good tone, and here we are. That's sort of where it kind of started, and also, again, with just the months of me working on Psychophant, and just every time I would open up a document to work on it, just a pound of resounding senses coming back to me like, oh yeah, this is not great. This is pretty bad. Oh yeah. Uh, the story's kind of not going anywhere. Uh, if you have not watched any of her videos, I would recommend it because I think she's on the right track. The way that she describes her things or tells her things might be a little different for some people because she's, a, in her words, a more of a thinker type. So go check her out if you're into that kind of content and tell me how you liked it because I think we may share a little bit of similarities between each other. All right, and now the test of time. Monarch, right? We're back to Monarch. When I was doing Monarch, everyone, when I was in the production stage, I was feeling confident about it, you know, feeling good about it. Like, oh yeah, this is upbeat. I like this. It's jazzy. All the jazz is going around. It's flowing. This is the shit. This is everything. I'm doing this. This is, yeah, this is it for me. I was pretty confident about it. But then when I turned around and started reading it again, I was like, hmm, something's not quite right. Then I read it again, I took a break, a day break. I read it again. I took a week maybe and I started doing other things. I read it again and I figured out, Aviv, the story is boring. How did I start? How did I start a story where my number one skill is in writing? writing action scenes, writing a lot of things. Because actually I have experience in writing RP settings, role playing. I could probably get into that later at a later time in another video. But I uh, just know that I like to, I used to like to role play a lot with a lot of fantasy and sci-fi and elements. But I was ashamed of myself because it's like, this is your strong suit. What's happening here? I, I don't think it's the writing, is it? Eh, so and so. It was actually the tone. The tone and the direction that I was going was damper. It wasn't as lively as I originally wrote it to be. It wasn't as, you know, everything just happening on the fly. And worst and foremost, I was pulling back punches. I could feel it in the story. And I was like, okay, I already told myself I was not gonna pull back anything. I told myself I'm not going to pull back punches. But yeah, here I am subconsciously afraid of some reason to just let all of my ideas kind of go and get out there see for some people it's they have too much ideas and they just let it out for me i just bottle it in i gatekeep it and it just suffers and simmers and then i forget it and that's my problem and it was happening again with monarch so you know what i did you know what i did i said okay we're gonna add some more to the beginning of this story and lo and behold, it made things 10 times better just for me reading back over it. So I encourage you all, even though it may seem like it's going to push back some dates and it's going to take longer than needed, just know in the after effect, it actually does the opposite. It doesn't push you back. It doesn't revert back your progress. It progresses you 
so much don't look at it as a reverse or look at it as a progression because that's what happened here and i am a lot more better with how the story is going to go yes i'll probably have to work on a little bit more chapters for the story but do i regret it hell no I think it needs it. That's why I wanted to kind of get into this topic with you all because Monarch applied to this tone degrading engagement problem and I said disengage, disengage, we're not doing this, we're starting over and it was fine and it will be fine and when it launches, whenever it dies, it'll just be there <laughs> so I'll just be happy about it and I encourage you all Although this was such a messy video, I am, oh boy, it was such a messy video. I just felt that I needed to go a new approach sometimes with some of these videos and talking to you guys about how I felt about topics. Because again, I may come off as a little stubborn bitch, but I do have the best intentions in mind for people. Thank you all so much for listening. That is the end of this video. Going over talking about tone, maybe I'll make a two-parter if this one isn't as satisfying to state your interest in what tone really is, because I can understand I kind of glossed over it. But I think we can kind of all agree, maybe hold hands on this one and say, yeah, tone's kind of important. You want to make sure that you have a good tone and direction for your story, not only to add on to the experiences of where the story is perpetuating, but the plot itself, your established of what it's trying to convey. Because if you have a weak plot, the tone could be strong, and what can happen is people will probably be confused if your plot is weak and your tone is strong. But if your tone is weak and your plot is strong, people are not probably going to feel as immersed in the story. So think about some takeaway and chooses. It might be different for different cases, but just think about it for yourself and evaluate for yourself to see what can help and what cannot. I think that will be the wrap up of this video. I am over and out. It's time for me to draw something because I need to work on that. Just so you know guys, but in sordid fashion, I will segue myself into a clunky advertisement for my patreon guys i have a patreon if you're interested in everything that i'm doing here if you're interested in me or my works or any other thing i have going on check out my patreon i post up there periodically it'll probably be more when monarch comes out or any other projects that i put out there i probably like to write too so i might put some chapters out there who knows if you're into that sort of thing go check out my patreon down in the description box below but if you're not into the monthly commitment i get that you can go ahead go to my coffee and donate to me one time or multiple times however much you wish i encourage you guys if you want to support creators go to their coffee it's a good site when you want to just give them a little stipend for what they do and i would so much appreciate it as well and if you're not into the donating thing poof, who does that you can commission me guys i'm over for commissions if you are interested in the art that i've done on this channel or any art that i have on my social medias you can commission me because i am open you could do it for business logos for character profiles character sheets anything in my terms of service that states go ahead and read over that in my website down in the description box below and give me a commission and if you're not into commissions uh what about commissions you can subscribe to me subscriptions are free here on youtube you can just hit the red button and be done thank you all for listening to this ramble of a kind video i i try to withhold myself from giving out rambles ever so often but sometimes they just come out like a floodgate so i appreciate you all for listening very much so and without anything else i have to add to the roster of unnecessary things to say i think i'll leave it off here